In this Inkscape video, I'm going to show you how to set up your document properties. When you open up Inkscape, you're presented with this window. This area in the center of the window is called the canvas. This bounded area is called the page. The, the lines at the top, bottom, left, and right of the page are called the page border. This shaded area to the right and on the bottom of the page is the border is the border shadow. Above the canvas you have a horizontal ruler and along the left side of the canvas you have a vertical ruler. Generally you'll uh, create your image on your page and you can store objects on your canvas. That's generally speaking. Um, when I start a new project, the first thing I usually do is click File, Document Properties to open up my Document Properties dialog box. I also could have clicked or pressed shift control D or clicked this icon right here. Both of those things, pressing shift control D and clicking or clicking the icon shown right here will open up the document properties dialog box. Once I've got the dialog box open, I set my page uh, properties. This field right here, the default unit field, sets the unit of measure shown on the ruler. And also, when you draw an object, the unit of measure sh shown here is also the unit of measure used for the object you draw. You can select from centimeter, feet, inches, meter, middle of meter, pica, point, or pixels. I usually, dis I usually choose pixels. This field right here sets the color of your canvas and the uh, transparency of the objects that you create. By default, the canvas is set to white and the uh, transparency for your image is set to transparent. And for most purposes, that's just fine. When you open up Inkscape, um, your page is, is set to the default size. Uh, Inkscape also has several predefined page sizes that you could change your pre that you could change your uh, page size to, and um, you should review the um, options in this page size box. And if you find a page size that is suitable for what you want to do, um, you can just click it and um, Inkscape will automatically set your page to that size. If your page is a re rectangle, it has a short edge and a long edge. If you s set your orientation to portrait, the short edge appears at the top. If you set your orientation to landscape, the long edge appears at the top. If none of the, if the default page size and none of the predefined page sizes suit your needs, you can set up a custom page size. Use this field to uh, uh, select your unit of measure. I usually select pixels. 
you can type your width in the width field and your height in the height field. I usually set my width to 800, so I'll type 800, and my height to 800. So I'll type 800 in the height field. So I now have a page size of, I now have a page size with a width of 800 pixels and a height of 800 pixels. You have several options down here. If you want to show the page border, you check this box. If you don't want to uh, show the page border, you uncheck this box. If you want to show the border shadow, you uh, check this box. If you don't want to show the uh, border shadow, you uncheck it. Uh, when you draw something, the border can appear, appear behind or on top of your drawing. And I'll demonstrate that for you. Uh, we drew this rectangle here. I'm going to give it a fill of red and then drag it over my border. And as you can see, the border appears behind it. But if I check this box, the border appears on top. I'm going to uncheck that box and I'm going to delete this object. Okay. This field right here, uh, this sets your border color and for my purposes uh, gray, which is the default, is just fine. If I click this icon right here, my uh, page will fill my window and uh, that's what I want it to do so I'm going that's what I I did. Alrighty, so after I've set my page settings, I usually like to create a grid. Uh, grids are useful for uh, sizing, aligning, and uh, positioning objects on your page. So to create a grid, I click the Grids tab. There are actually two types of grids. Uh, rectangular grids and um, axon axonometric grids. For now, we're going to uh, focus on the rectangular grid. So I'm going to select rectangular grid and then click the new button. So, uh, Inkscape creates the default grid, and there are several fields here that we can set. The first one is enabled, and if your grid is enabled, you can see it and you can snap to it as you draw. If you uncheck this box, the grid is uh, no longer enabled, you cannot snap to it, you cannot see it. We want to, to enable our grid. This, in this field, if you check this box, the, the grid is visible. If you uncheck it, it's not visible. But one thing you should know about that, if, you're, if you're, your um, grid is not visible, but it is enabled, you can still snap to the grid as you draw. So you should keep that in mind. You can have a grid that is not visible, but if it's enabled, you can still snap to it. Uh, I'm going to make our grid visible. This field, snap to visible grid lines only. That means you can only snap to grid lines you can see. If your window is zoomed out far enough, you can't see all of the grid lines that are there. And this particular grid is a perfect example of that. 
Let's look down here at the spacing X and the spacing Y field and the grid units field. The grid units tells us that our unit of measure for our grid is pixels because we've selected pixels here. The spacing X field tells us the distance between vertical grid lines. The spacing Y field tells us the distance between horizontal grid lines. Okay, so if I look at this, I should have a grid line every 10 pixels. But let's look over here. This is the 250 pixel mark on our ruler. This is zero. We have uh, a grid line here, 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 and here. So this is the 50 pixel grid line. This is 100. This is uh, 150. This is 200 and this is 250. So we don't have a grid line every 10 pixels like it says here. Uh, we have a grid line every 50 pixels. Hmm, wonder why that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my zoom tool and then I'm going to zoom in and voila, I have extra grid lines. Um, let's check them to see if they're in the proper place. Okay, so here's my ruler. Here's the 100 pixel mark. And so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 grid lines. So I have a grid line every 10 pixels. And the same is true horizontally. I have a grid line every 10 pixels. Um, here's the 800 mark and here's the 700 mark. I have a grid line every 10 pixels. So if I zoom out again, you can see um, with this field it says snap to visible grid lines only. So if I, have, if I have this field checked, I can only snap to the grid lines that I can see. If I uncheck it, I can snap, the, the, the other grid lines are there, I just can't see them, but I can snap to them. Okay. Alrighty, so down in this field, uh, my grid units is, is set to pixels. And as I said before, you can choose any unit of measure you want, but I usually use pixels. This origin X field and origin Y field sets where our page begins um, in relationship to our grid. So here's the, here's the zero point on our ruler. Here's where our page is beginning. You can see it's right at the darker line and the darker line is what they call a, a major grid line. So I'm gonna type 10 here. And you can see my page moved over Ten pixels to the left. If I put a negative ten here, my page moves over. That's in my origin X box. My ten moves o moves over ten pixels to the right. If I put a, I'm gonna change this back to zero. If I put a, a 10 in my origin Y, and by the way, your origin X is your X axis, which goes up and down 
and your origin y refers to your y axis I'm sorry I've got that backwards your origin x axis refers to your horizontal axis which goes across and your y axis uh, refers to your vertical axis which goes up and down so if I put uh, 10 in my origin y box you'll see that my page moves down 10 pixels if I put in a negative 10 it moves up 10 pixels and that was all for demonstration prop, uh, purposes for most purposes a zero in the origin x and a in the origin y box works just fine as I said before the spacing x field determines the distance between each of the vertical lines I usually set my spacing x to 20 and so now you can see I have 20 pixels between each vertical line so here's 20 40 60 80 100 my spacing y field sets the distance between my horizontal grid lines and I usually set that to 20 so now you can see here's 800 here's 700 and I have um, 20 40 60 80 100 uh, I have each of these blocks is also 20 pixels okay this field here can be used to set your grid line color and um, blue for me blue is just fine for most purposes and this line here sets your major grid line color major grid line as I said before is nothing more than a, a darker line and again blue is just fine with me for most of my purposes the major grid line every field just sets you know how often a grid line appears so we've got it set to five so there's a major grid line here so I count one two three four five so got another major grid line one two three four five another major grid line and the same thing going down here's your major grid line one two three four five major grid line one two three four five major grid line a grid could also be dots instead of uh, lines so in a case like that we just check this box here and we'll see our, our grid changes to a dot grid instead of a, uh, a line grid and that's useful sometimes and basically that's it that's how I uh, uh, set up my page properties when I'm getting ready to start a new project uh, the only other thing I would do is uh, click this box right here to um, have my page fit in my window and close my document properties box and I'm ready to get started with creating my image.